heard about ChatGPT and want to know how to use it to run your short-term rental business? Well, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to do four key things using ChatGPT. First, I'm going to help you learn how to use ChatGPT to do market research. How do you know that the places that you have selected are right for you? Do they have the right occupancy? How much money can you make? And what are the laws and regulations? ChatGPT can help you figure that out. Next, ChatGPT can help you develop a marketing plan from social media to ads. You can use ChatGPT to pull all of that together for you so that all you have to do is execute. Third, ChatGPT is going to be an invaluable tool to help you write the listing copy from the description to the title to the house rules, everything that your guests need to know about your place before booking, ChatGPT can help you write that. And then finally, ChatGPT is going to be an amazing tool to write guest replies to inquiries that come in. And if those reviews are not favorable, well, even better because ChatGPT is going to help you write those in a great way. So if you want to learn how to do these four things using ChatGPT, to help you run your short-term rental business, keep watching. So as an Airbnb host, you may have heard about ChatGPT, which is a natural language processor. So what it does is it takes a good portion of the internet and it scrubs that information and it keeps it in a database essentially. And when you ask it, when you give it a prompt, you say, I'd like to know X, Y, Z information. It will take the information and not provide that to you, but it will actually analyze the information based on the prompt that you gave it. So it's almost like Google on steroids. It really helps you be more efficient with your time because you're not having to read lots of articles or other information in order to gather the analysis, the information that you were seeking, but ChatGPT will kind of present it for you. Okay, so let's start by doing some market research to know if the location that we want to start our Airbnb business is going to be viable. We want to know about how much money we can earn per night. We want to know how occupied we'll be. And then most importantly, we want to know the extent to which short-term rentals are legal. And if not, what the other option might be, it could be a midterm rental. So. Let's see, I'm going to say, what cities in the DC metro area have the most friendly regulations for short-term rentals? Great, so this is telling me um, about Washington DC, Arlington and Alexandria, which are right next to DC. I'm a little bit further out. However, this, this still works. So this is telling me that in DC, you can do a short-term rental, um, but you have to have a license and there's a limit to how much you can rent per year. Arlington, which is just across the Potomac, has very similar regulations and Alexandria, also has some limitations on how many guests can stay as well as it requires that the host be present. So that means that in Alexandria, hosts cannot have an investment property and then rent that entire property out as a short-term rental. Rather, it would be an owner who would rent out rooms in a home or perhaps if they had, you know, a basement apartment or a garage apartment or something um, also on their property, they could rent that out so long as they are present. So. This is just the initial search that you wanna do in terms of legality. But now let's look at, let's just pick one of these and let's look at occupancy rates as well as average nightly rates. What are the average nightly rates for short-term rentals in Alexandria, Virginia? Right away, this tells me I should have entered the bedroom and bath count because uh, that is the one of the biggest factors that determines your nightly rate. So I'm gonna say, so I gave it some more parameters and now it's gonna tell me what a single room will go for in Alexandria. And it's looking like 40 to 150, which is a pretty broad range. And I'm guessing that's gonna have to do with size and whether there's an ensuite bathroom and location. But assuming that the apartment is going to be pretty close to public transportation and close to DC, then I would go ahead and assume 
approximately 125 to 150 a night for a really nice room. I wouldn't limit my market research to chat GPT, but this at least gives you a place to start. I do think that the most important thing that you want to do on chat GPT when it comes to your market research is looking at the regulations because I do think that they will give you a pretty good summary of what regulations exist so that you, you know right away whether it's a, a go or a no-go for that location. So now let me ask it what the occupancy rates are. What are the average occupancy rates for a single room rental in Alexandria, Virginia for short-term rentals? Okay, so this finally spit out the information. That took about a minute or two, which is pretty interesting. And this is telling us that the occupancy rates, of course, vary by season and demand. However, the D.C. area is a very, very popular area for tourists to travel, especially during the spring and summer. And so this is telling us that during that time, the spring and summer, you can expect your average occupancy rate to, to be between 70 to 90 percent. So I would just take that middle figure. So I think you can run your analysis uh, for Alexandria, Virginia to be at least for six months of the year to be about 80 percent at about 125 to 150 dollars a night and and go take your analysis further from there okay so the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to ask it to write up a very brief marketing plan for this one bedroom one bath stay in alexandria virginia so write up a brief social media and add marketing plan for a one bedroom one bath short-term rental stay in alexandria virginia and let's see what it comes up with. So the first it says to create your social media accounts and where to do that. So that I think would then require you to have a name for this place and you would want it to be catchy. So that's like something else that you could ask ChatGPT to do and we can do that here. I can say, suggest five very brief names for a one bedroom, one bath short term rental. Stay in the heart of Alexandria, Virginia that is close to public transportation and close to Washington, DC. Great, so it just gave me five titles that I can use and I can make those my handles for Facebook, Instagram, as well as Twitter. And then it says to post high quality photos, which is, you know, kind of duh, but you will use the, the thing that you'll want to do about photos, and I can do a whole video about this, but you'll want to get square crop as well as landscape, as well as portrait. That way you can fit them on a wide variety of uh, social media platforms. But essentially you're just going to go through each of these steps and you can use chat GPT to dig a little bit deeper. So this says to utilize local hashtags and geotagging. Well, what would be a good hashtag? And it's likely going to pull the information that I've already asked it in this chat. So Transit Retreat Virginia, Alexandria Short Term, I can use all of these in my social media platforms. So you see what I'm doing here is I'm just going through each of these steps and then how can ChatGPT take me one step further to, to getting this step done? I would even like for this fourth one here, this is a good one. I would definitely have ChatGPT write up all of my automated messages to guests. So a confirmation message, a check-in instruction message, asking them about how their stay is going, check out instructions, and then a reminder to do a review if they haven't already done so. And uh, that's another video that I would be happy to record if that would be helpful for you. Like how, how have I uh, done all of my automated messaging? But you can have ChatGPT do this for you. If you found this video helpful, give a like and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Let's take one of my units, which is a one bedroom. It's in the heart of downtown and it is by the creek and it is in the most walkable part of the city close to all of the amenities. So I'm gonna input some of those characteristics and I'm gonna ask for, write a 32 max character limit title for an Airbnb that is a tiny apartment downtown, walkable to all bars, restaurants, and the newest breweries in town. So it gave me one, so I'm asking it to give me five, and let's see what it pops up. So I don't quite like these five. I actually like this first one. It's pretty good. It's, it's telling me the location, that it's small, and that you can walk to everything. I may want to emphasize that it's close to the town's nearest breweries. There we go. Tiny downtown brewery haven. It's not emphasizing that I'm close to, or that I, we can walk everywhere, but I think the downtown kind of 
captures that, but you can see that I, I had to give it one initial prompt and then revise from there. So that's how you can use it to create a title. So now let's see what ChatGPT can do to write a listing description, just 500 characters. Write a 500 character listing description for this Airbnb tiny downtown brewery haven. It's doing way more than 500 max characters. And so I think this is part of the challenge of ChatGPT is that it's pretty good, but it's not perfect. You kind of have to work with it a little. You can see it says, welcome to your cozy downtown brewery haven. Perfect for solo travels or couples, which it is. The apartment is steps away from the newest breweries, bars, and restaurants check it features a comfy queen size bed not sure how they knew that but that's true it's probably because <laughs> i've done this already in the system so it kind of it's it's pulling from my own user history to to write this so it isn't coming completely fresh but um, this is perfect this is exactly what i want it to do and so what i will do is likely take this copy and paste and put it into airbnb so you've already seen there's a listing description as well as a listing title. And then I can keep going. I can say, write the house rules for this. Okay, one of the greatest uses for ChatGPT in a short-term rental business, in my mind, is using it to reply to guest inquiries as well as guest reviews. I have been in the business now for a while and I tend to find that when guests are staying at my properties, they're, they're are a few questions that they ask that I'm constantly giving the answer to. Uh, I do have a guidebook for all of my properties. However, I find that people don't open those and read them, they are digitally available. So they wind up asking questions like, you know, a great place for takeout, great restaurant, a great uh, for dinner and a great uh, breakfast spot. And what you can do is you can ask ChatGPT to reply to that inquiry. So please write a reply to a guest inquiry about the best places for brunch in Alexandria, Virginia, make it succinct and provide three options, one of them being vegetarian. And it's recommending three great places. I think I've been to two of the three. So the Majestic saying that it's trendy and it gives you a brief description of the type of food that's provided and it does the same thing for the other two options. So I would take this copy and paste and, and send it to my guests. So replying to guest inquiries during their stay is a great use for ChatGPT. Another great use, and I think this one is probably the best use um, because I have used it the most when it comes to my Airbnb business, and that's writing a public review for uh, guest reviews, especially when those reviews are negative. So, so I did get a very recent negative review that talked a lot about the noise even though I disclose in my listing copy that there is the chance for noise. And it, it is a valid criticism of the place. So I think what I've gotten is, um, I actually have the box over here, but I've gotten some noise canceling, white noise machines, and some earplugs that I will be putting. But let's have ChatGPT write a very brief reply to that public review. Write a brief and polite public response to a negative guest review that complained about the noise heard in the apartment and let's see what ChatGPT comes up with. Great, this is, this is perfect. So again, thank you, apologize for any inconvenience, taken steps to address the issue and added some noise remediation measures to improve the guest experience. I, that is perfect. And the reason that I think it's so important to use um, a service like ChatGPT to write public responses to guest reviews is because one, it takes all of the emotion out of it. Um, you will have something that is very objective. It allows you to respond in a way that isn't retaliatory and is really written for the next guest because the guest who stayed with you and left that review, they're not gonna read it they've moved on with their lives. It's your next potential guest, those people who are clicking on your listing and they're reading the reviews, those are the people that you are writing these responses for. So that's why I think it really is worth your time to write a review and then to use a service like ChatGPT to make sure that it's nice, clean, crisp, and um, is emotion free. So that is the best use for ChatGPT in your short-term rental business, in my mind. So if there are other things that you 
want to learn about in terms of using AI in your short-term rental business, let me know. I'm kind of toying with doing some design work and some AI tools to help us design our upcoming glamping retreat that we are going to be building um, in the next year or so. So I'd be happy to show you how I do that as well. If you want to become an Airbnb host, click the link down below for my referral code and I can help you with your listing. Check the description down below for links to all of my favorite things to furnish an Airbnb. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Bye-bye.